Hey. Hello, everybody. Um, Pastor Miles Manuel, the late Miles Manuel, had a quote that said, well, he said, you know, you add value to your work and people will be willing to pay you for it. So every time he would commission something to me, I would, for me, I would say, you know, I worked on my, my craft tell people willing to pay me for it. Then I would give him the price. My name is Jamal Roller, celebrity artist. A name that was given to me by a rapper called Lil John. Lil John is from Atlanta. Most of you might know him. He goes by, the, you know, he's famous for his ad libs. Yeah, or okay. Okay, okay. But it was, you know, one day, um, Lil John approached me to do a portrait at the Marina Village at Atlantis in the Bahamas. And he loved the portrait when I presented it to him. And I was excited, because for me, I was like, you know, this is an opportunity for my name to get out to his friends. Oh, that's Lil John. There he is. Okay! Anyway. So I was excited. I wanted my name to get out there. So I always, you know, mentioned to him, hey, remember, your name Jamal. When you tell your friends about me, let them know it's Jamal Roll. So when he introduced me to his friend, he was like, hey, I'd like you to meet the celebrity artist. So I said to him, hey, it's, it's Jamal, Jamal. So he and I went to the club, and he showed off this portrait. He introduced me to some other friends, and he was like, I want you to meet the celebrity artist. So all night, he ignored my request. Remember this name, Jamal Roll. So I was mad with him, because I'm like, here I am all day, you know, chilling with him. We be having a good time. And he just wouldn't remember my name. So the next morning, his friend called me and said, hello. Is this the celebrity artist? So I'm like, this celebrity artist thing again? This, I didn't even want to answer him. But he said, yeah, because I want to do a portrait for my wife, but I want to spend some good money on it. But I don't want just a regular artist. I want a celebrity artist to do it. I say, what? Well, this isn't a celebrity artist. This is the celebrity artist. <laughs> and my friends, that's how the name celebrity artist was created. I don't know if Lil John realized that he was creating a brand for me, but he did. So, you know, thanks, Lil John, because the name stuck with me and it made sense. And when people know, wow, I'm meeting a celebrity artist, you know, people expect, uh, okay, this is where the celebrities go. And I was able to match my price with the moniker because I was, I was putting out some, some good works. And over my career, I've been blessed. Um, to do portrait for people like Oprah, Prince Harry, and uh, the picture earlier was the Pope. I went to Rome and met the Pope, and I'm not even Catholic. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. So, how does a black boy from Nassau, Bahamas, achieve this level of success? So, I, I brought you some brushes, you know, to tell you how I did it. So, my first brush is uniqueness. Let's say uniqueness. Uniqueness. Yes. Well, what I did, like, there's so many talented artists from all around the world. And so, what I had to do was find a way to make myself unique. As an artist, growing up, um, you know, I grew up underprivileged. And most artists in the Bahamas and all over the world, as a fact, um, struggle. And what I wanted to do was to make myself unique and focus on doing portraits for high-end individuals. And I would see them at Atlantis and, and Paradise Island when I hear that, you know, a celebrity here, man, listen, I wouldn't even bathe. I'll just throw on my clothes and, <laughs> and fly in the car and, and, you know, do this drawing in about an hour just to get my portrait in front of these celebrities. This was before social media and people doing it now. But this was way back then. And when a celebrity would, would get my painting, they would say to the other person, you know, this guy in the Bahamas, you need to check out his work. And that's how I started gaining clients. 
And then, you know, there are people would call other people. It, it got so big till, you know, I had to get an agent. I had to say, you know, let your people talk to my people, you know. I big time now, <laughs> you know. So, you know, unique. Find deep within yourself what makes you unique. People would see what you're doing as so unconventional a lot of times. And you, you could find people, naysayers in abundance. When you want somebody negative, trust me, you will find everybody to help you with your negativity. You know, people, a lot of times people would say, you know, where you just, how you just blew up? You know, where you, where you just came from all of a sudden? And I'm like, no, I've been working, you know, all this time, beating on my craft, and they, they really didn't see it. They, they just saw it, you know, from... School days, I was the artist who would draw portraits for all of my friends. Because I, I had a teacher that told me, listen, you don't have to, um, to be an artist is a dumb subject. Because she asked me what I want to be when I grow up, and I said, I want to be an artist. She was like, why would you be an artist? All the dumb kids and the dumb and the crazy kids is what, who's who they put in art. Now, I, well, I'm crazy. <laughs> I was a little dumb too, but anyway. <laughs> but, you know, this is something that I wanted to do all my life. When I was four years old. And here I am talking to this lady that I trust. And she telling me, you know, to throw away all of my dreams. So I didn't listen to her. I was so, you know, hard-headed. I derived the plan. I started drawing science diagrams, and I would charge the boys a dollar, and I would charge the girls a kiss. So, so far, this art thing was working out quite fine for me. I don't know what she's talking about. And pretty soon, you know, I would do drawings of all of my friends, and it was a, it was a defining moment. I had another teacher, and instead of doing math, like, because I never was good at math. I mean, I could count money, thank God. But I never <laughs> was good at math. And instead of doing my math lesson, I drew this crazy caricature of the teacher and passed it around as a joke. And when he found it, I was terrified. But, you know, he saw it and he laughed. And instead of scolding me, he paid me for it. He paid me $10 for it. This was it a defining moment of my life? Because this was the start of my career as an artist. So pretty soon, I stopped doing work in every class. I started drawing every other teacher because I <laughs> wanted to multiply that, that $10. And it, and it grew for me doing portraits of people like Nicki Minaj, um, doing a lot of national projects in the Bahamas. Um, and it took a lot of sacrifice, you know, for this to happen. Sacrifice is, is I want you to say sacrifice. sacrifice. When I say sacrifice, listen, don't mind me, you know, having on a little okay suit. But I remember I used to go, to, I went to Walmart my first time to buy, to buy a suit. Now I want to have a decent looking suit like, like Miles Monroe Jr. One of these days, I, you know, Charo, one of these days I'll get it, you know. But it, it, it took, took a lot of sacrifice. I mean, I remember my, the day my first child was born. That's Hazel. Ooh. Well, thank God she got her looks for my mommy. Cause, you know. But it was an opportunity. The, the day Hazel born, that was the day Hazel was born. And I got a call and they said, Katy Perry is at Atlantis. And I'm like, when is she leaving? Well, you know, today is the only day to get to her. So how do I tell my then young wife? I was like, hey, listen, um, I want to get you some ice cream from over Paradise Island. <laughs> you know? And she was like, ice cream? No. And I was like, you've been craving ice cream for nine months. Why not today? I, I'll buy you a whole... A pint of ice cream, whatever it is, a gallon of ice cream. And I remember saying, listen, I, you know, I hate to say this, but boy, I really have to go meet Katy Perry. Even Hazel was like, you can't be serious. Even the baby was look at me like, you can't be serious. So after, you know, me talking like, you know, I could just, 
it, it, you know, only could take like about five minutes. For me to get to PI, it took like 45 minutes. But it's only five minutes. So she, she allowed me, and the baby allowed me to make that connection. I needed Katy Perry to help, to help my portfolio. I wanted to, to diversify my portfolio so I could reach those sort of clients. And, and Katy Perry's portrait led to me doing portraits of people like Justin Bieber, Taylor Swift, and, and help my name. Another, another thing that I sacrifice, I do the editorial cartoons for the Tribune newspaper in the Bahamas. For years, from I was in school, I would always do these crazy cartoons of all of the kids, and I just never knew why. But in hindsight, this was preparing me for today of doing these cartoons. And when I first started at the Tribune newspaper, they said, listen, you know, after years of me beating on every editor's door over and over and over again, they said, okay, we give you a chance, so we just want you to try it out for two days. And I was like, well, after two days, if people like it, we could do five days. They said, well, okay, we'll see after a few months. So after a few months, I wanted to renegotiate my contract because, you know, I'm like, hey, listen, people starting to like it. And the editor was like, no. So what I did was I drew for five days and only was being paid for two days. And I did that for a whole year because I wanted it to go. So it took a lot of sacrifice. And when I finally, when I, after a year, I tried to renegotiate it and they said no. That's when I said, well, okay, I'll go back to two days. And that was when the editor was like, no, 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 no. And they started paying me for five days. So now today I'm paid for five days. You know, and I'm doing the cartoons in the newspaper and I've really achieved some acclaim all over the country for this cartoon. And and for me to get to that level, it took sacrifice. So always remember, sacrifice isn't a bad thing. But for most successful people, for them to get there, they had to take sacrifice. So my second brush is sacrifice. My third brush is belief. Over my career, I've done some crazy things. <laughs> Listen, some of the craziest things I can think about, I did. The craziest thing. I mean, I, I, because I believed in my ability, and I believed that I could get to these places. Now, Oprah was somebody who I always looked up to, and everybody looked up to Oprah. And I, I wanted to have some type of connection with her. And I remember telling my friend, listen, I want to send this letter to Oprah, and it was like, listen, Oprah gets letters from millions of people. You ain't gonna never get, why she could read your letter? Why would Oprah check for you? So, but I, so Sydney Poitier came to the Bahamas and the government, our government commissioned me to do a portrait of him. And I learned that Oprah would be at, uh, with him. And so they were having this VIP event, big dinner, you know, security, it's crazy. But me, I dress up in my ADP suit because I gonna meet Oprah. Listen, you can't tell me Oprah leaving my country, and I'm not meeting. I almost wear a scarf, scissors tail, top hat, gloves, because I'm meeting Oprah. You can't, listen, you couldn't tell me I was meeting Oprah. No way she coming to my country. No. This just was, I just had a strong belief system. So I went to, to the event and saw all of these securities, and I saw the prime minister's aid, and, and you know, and I, I stood up with confidence. I said, hey, listen. You let the Prime Minister know, Jamal roll us out here with the portrait that he commissioned for Oprah on behalf of the Bahamas. And he came back and he said, the Prime Minister said, send them in. Oh man, I walk like this, oh yeah. I listen, yeah, I was in the room with Oprah. So Oprah saw me and she was like, and the Prime Minister was like, yes, he's our artist and we commissioned them. I was so good at believing the Prime Minister believed that he commissioned. Because he tell the story, I said, like, wow, I probably did commission. So, so what I did was I sent them the bill and they paid me for it. So, <laughs> so what, I had a strong belief system. And when I met Oprah, Oprah was like, oh my God, Jamal, how are you? You know, Oprah was like, oh my God, you get a TV, you get a TV. You get a car, you get a car. But <laughs> and when I met her, I was like, um, she was like, Jamal, you're so talented. 
can I hug you? He's like, what? You so open? You can do whatever you want to do to me. I'm thinking, I'm, like, <laughs> I'm thinking you can do whatever you want to do. But, and a similar thing like that happened to me and I met Johnny Depp when he was at an event and I believed that, listen, you can leave my country, whatever it takes. And it was at, at this event, the film festival, Johnny Depp asked people questions, all of the press. Now, I'm not, I wasn't a member of the press, but I needed to look like I was a member of the press. <laughs> you know, once I say I'm a member of the press, I'm the member of the press. So my friend who was next to me, who was like twice the size of me, he had on a coat. And in the middle of a crowd, I said, hey, boy, let me your coat. And we stood up in the middle of this crowd, and I took on this coat that was swimming on me. And, uh, and, and uh, Johnny Depp was like, okay, well, this is the last question. Raise hands. But while everybody raised their hands, I stood and jumped. You know, you swear I said, member of the press. And he, he selected me, and I said, hey, you know, Johnny Depp, I did this portrait of you. You know, and he was like, you did a portrait of me? Yeah. He's like, well, come up. Come up. I want to see it. And the next day, I ended up in People Magazine, Life Magazine, all over the news. I wasn't supposed to be there. You know, that, trip, that picture with me and Al Sharpton, that's my Walmart suit. I remember that suit. I still have the tag on it. I was so green. I didn't grow up like, like Chawa wearing suits. I was so green. I remember after I made that presentation, the lady was like, hey, your tag's still on the suit. I didn't even realize. I thought that was how you wear it. I was so green. I don't know. So this morning, I, I made sure, you know, the, the tag was off of this suit. I almost came here with the tag on the suit. I didn't know that. But how the Al Sharpton story happened, I flew to this event in D.C. I wasn't invited to the event. It was a high-end event. U.S. governmental officials, senators, and all of this. I did never travel before. I remember asking my cousin who lived in, in D.C., like, how do I get to this event? She said, well, you, you know, but the only thing I could think about is Subway. And I was so green, I, green, I was like, Subway, I ain't want no sandwich right now. I was, because I like, I late for this event, and you're talking about Subway? I could get Subway home, why I could eat Subway here? She was like, I'm talking about the Metro, the train. I didn't know what she's talking about, that's just how green I was. I went to this event, and I had on my suit, my, my $50 Walmart suit, but I looked like somebody. When I walked to the event, the lady said, hey, sir, this is your door right there, and I walked straight in. And I ended up with, <laughs> with all, I just believed that this would happen. My cousin was like, listen, so you travel from the Bahamas to DC to an event that you're not even invited to, and you trying to meet Al Sharpton? But at the end of the event, I ended up being the keynote speaker. So after, after Senator McCain and Michael Bloomberg those spoke, they said, come into the stage all the way from the Bahamas, Jamal Roll. I was so shy, listen. <laughs> My belly was hurting, but I made the keynote speech without an invitation. You know, all of this happened because I have a strong belief system. And I just say, believe. <laughs> I met Prince, in this photo, this shows an artist and this shows a prince. I know both of us are good looking, so you can't tell which one is the prince. But the white guy, he's the prince. I, you know, but you know, and the same thing happened. You know, I was challenged, I told someone I want to meet somebody from the royal family, and that was impossible. They had a good laugh of me. You ain't gonna never meet nobody from the royal family. And at this moment, I did a portrait. And I, listen, I break all kind of protocol. Protocol breach over and over. Because when I gave Prince Harry the portrait, he, he, um, he was faced, the crowd couldn't see him. And he was about to sit down. And I said to him, I said, hey, listen, show it off, man. You know, all kind of, bro. I said, boy, listen, let people see it. Because all of the press, I wanted them to capture it. I said, listen, don't sit down, show it off. That's what I was telling him there, and he was like, huh? I ain't the prince and you giving me orders? <laughs> but what he did was he showed it off and smiled, and then I ended up on CBS, MSNBC, everybody interviewed the guy who drew the prince. So, you know, it takes a strong, strong belief system. And my, my, my final brush for you is love. Love what you do, love the struggle. 
love, love the process. You know, I mean, it was a time when I just would draw. It wasn't being paid for it, but I really loved this process. I invested a lot of money to buy frames, and, and you know, because I loved seeing this thing grow. I would have something inside of me that says, hey, Jamal, you need to do this. And when I follow it, some amazing things would happen. You know, I, I remember Maria Shriver. She came to Atlantis and, well, let me say, let's see, Senator John McCain. I heard that Senator John McCain is at Atlantis. And I was like, okay, I got to get the Senator John McCain. I got to, you know, that's what I do. I believe, you know, buddy, there's nobody in the world right now I hear on me. So I, I went and I ended up meeting with the butler and say, hey, listen, it's a portrait I want to do, but it ain't from it from you to him. So when I, and then when we presented it, he was like, wow, this is, this is fabulous. I, I love the portrait. And Senator McCain invited me to D.C., and I ended up on Capitol Hill having big time meeting in my big time suit, you know, talking about, listen, how do we move legislation forward? And, you know, I had to use all of my big sophisticated words to know like what I'm talking about. But I just wanted this opportunity. And, the, and similar, I just loved making this happen. Loved that, wow, I can believe something and I can make, and I can make this happen. And Maria Shriver came to the Marina Village and I had this portrait of President Obama. And I said, she wanted to purchase it. And I was like, no man, I don't, I don't want to sell it. No matter how much she begged, because I started to, I built this thing that, okay, you know, my portraits are becoming valuable. And I wanted to somehow make a connection with President Obama. I could have said, listen, whatever you want to pay for it, you know, and sell it. But I really believe that I could make some connection with President Obama. So how, how could you get, I just wanted him to notice what I did because President Obama really, from he was a senator, was a, a inspiration really to me. And later on, I ended up um, getting a letter from President Obama. And before that, I ended up getting a letter from Oprah Winfrey saying, you know, it was so nice meeting you in the Bahamas. So. It's crazy how I wanted to write Oprah and people said this would never happen. But in the same time, Oprah wanted to write me. That's more important. Oprah wanted to write me. You know, so, yeah, so what I want to say with these brushes, what I've learned in life, you know, we're all artists. Everybody's an artist. You know, we use, we have a blank canvas using our talents to create a work of art. But it's, it's how you stroke your brushes, that determines if your art is ordinary or it's a masterpiece. Thank you.